The last time Vincent Ricciardo and Vito Guzzo were in the same orbit was 32 years ago. on November 2nd, 1992, at around 7.10 p.m., a stolen Monte Carlo cut off a 1992 Lincoln Town car on Caldwell Avenue and 71st Street in Maspeth, Queens. Behind the Lincoln was a stolen U-Haul van, which boxed the Lincoln in. A group of young men jumped out of the stolen vehicles, wearing Halloween and hockey goalie masks, firing a shotgun and pistols into the Lincoln. The men inside the Lincoln were on their way to a wake. They also was part of the Vicarina faction of the Colombo family. The driver of the Lincoln was Anthony Messi, and his passengers that night was Paul Schiavo and Vincent Ricciardo, also known as Vinnie Unions. Following the shooting, the masked young men fled in the third stolen vehicle, a 1986 Buick Electra station wagon. They left behind the Monte Carlo and U-Haul van running with the windshield wipers still in motion. All three victims were transferred by ambulance to Elmhurst Hospital. Messi was pronounced DOA shortly after arriving, Schiavo had six bullet wounds to his arm and stomach, and Vinny Unions was shot in his lower back. He remained in critical condition, as did Schiavo. Initially, investigators believed the shooting was part of the ongoing Colombo War between the Carmine Persico and Vicarina factions, which made sense since the victims were identified as being associated to the Arena faction. Another focal point for investigators, after further looking into Vinny Unions, was that he was once a defendant in the well-publicized window case, although towards the end of the trial, he was severed from the case due to a heart attack. Naturally, they investigated whose wake the victims were headed to. It happened to be Dennis Guzzardo, a member of the Colombo family. Guzzardo became a father figure to Vito Guzzo Jr. after Vito's father, Vito Sr., had disappeared. Vito Sr. was also a Colombo member who disappeared while on a hunting trip in 1987. One of the fellow hunters that day was none other than Vinny Unions. Apparently, Guzzardo told Vito Jr. that Vinny Unions was involved in his father's death, but also explained to him that he couldn't retaliate. Vito was one of the mass shooters that night. According to Vito's half-brother, Anthony Guzzo, his father Vito Sr. had just come home from prison at the time and was not mentally well. Back then, the Colombo street boss was Benny Alloy, and supposedly, Vito Sr. told Alloy, who are you going to boss around? Me? You used to make coffee for me at my club, or similar wording to that effect. That statement and insult sealed Vito Sr.'s fate. Obviously, the order was given to hit Vito Sr., and he was lured to the hunting trip where he would be killed. His body, still to this day, has never been discovered. My friend Johnny Santori was very close to Vito Sr. and said he was a good guy and someone you could go to for twenty or 30000 and he'd give it to you without blinking an eye. Vito Jr. used to call Johnny Santori the ultimate warrior. In the street, I was never a big Vito Guzzo fan, nonetheless. The one thing I did respect him for was that he retaliated against one of the people responsible for his father's murder. Where Vito acted, Anthony Guzzo talked. He would curse Vinny Unions up and down and said that he was going to get him again and that Joey Cupcakes was going to drive a motorcycle with Anthony on the back and they were going to pull up the Vinny Unions and Anthony would shoot him. As I listened to Anthony tell me this, I couldn't picture him doing anything like that. And I was right because it never happened. In 1998, Vito Guzzo was hit with a superseding indictment, charging him with 18 counts, including several murders and the attempted murder of Schiavo and Vinny Unions. On September 14, 1998, he pled guilty to the indictment and was sentenced that October to 38 years. Understandably, Vinny Unions carries a grudge and allegedly made a comment that Vito took the plea to get off of the street because he knew he would seek revenge. I have to disagree if that statement was indeed true, because Vito shot Vinny Unions in 1992 and took the plea in 1998. Vinny Unions had six years while Vito was still out on the street to get his revenge. 
Apparently, and according to Michael Cookie Durso, a former Genovese associate, he and Vito were plotting to kill Vinnie Unions during the mid-90s. In 2014, Vito was in Danbury Prison with former Colombo street boss Ralph DeLeo. At the time, DeLeo was having a hard time in prison because inmates, specifically other wise guys in the prison, had spread a rumor that he was no good. In turn, Vito sent Anthony Guzzo to Leo's name and wanted an official word on DeLeo from the Colombo family. Anthony met with me and he had a piece of paper with DeLeo's name on it. He wanted me to bring it to Sally Bread Cambria, who was the Colombo street boss at the time and who stayed in my family's restaurant, Spallini's in Queens. I went to Spallini's and seen Sally Bread, handed him the paper, and explained the whole story. He told me that he would get back to me with an answer. A few days later, I received a message to go to Spallini's. When I got there, I seen Sally Bread, who told me that as far as the Columbos were concerned, the Leo was in good standing, and also stated that the rumor was false. I then met with Anthony and relayed that message. Anthony said that he would go up to see Vito and let him know. One of the things Anthony told me was that Vito was complaining that when wise guys in Danbury wanted to talk privately, they would dismiss him, which he didn't like because at the time he was just an associate. Anyway, when Vito received the message, he spread it around Danbury and DeLeo's life in prison drastically changed. About two weeks after Sally Bread gave me that message, I seen him again one night in Spallini's. He called me over, thanked me for relaying the message, and told me that Vito sent him another message asking for permission if it was okay that he'd be straightened out in prison. So the ulterior motive for Vito in helping DeLeo was that if he could make DeLeo's prison dilemma go away, DeLeo would induct him into the family, which ultimately took place in the prison bathroom. Ralph DeLeo was happy because he no longer had problems in the prison, and Vito was thrilled because he no longer had to be dismissed when guys wanted to talk. In September of 2021, many unions and a dozen members of the Colombo family, including the administration, were indicted for racketeering. Benny Unions was accused of extorting and threatening a senior union official. In July 2023, he pled guilty to his part of the indictment. And on February 28, 2024, he was sentenced to a little over four years. He's scheduled to be released in mid to late 2028. In a strange twist of fate, Vito Guzzo is also scheduled to be released in November 2028. Vinny Unions was a captain with a crew. And when he's released, if his position is reinstated, he'll still be a captain. Vito's a member of Sally Bread's crew. Sal, at the moment, is a captain and no longer the Colombo Street Boss. What will most likely take place is a sit-down between Vinny Unions and Vito. Prior to the sit-down, Vito will be reminded that all old vendettas and grudges no longer exist now that he's a member of Cousin Nostra. Vinny Unions and Vito will have to shake hands and make peace. Whether they honor this agreement or not, only time will tell. 